Columbia University is without a doubt one of the best schools in the entire world. With more than 40,000 people applying every single year and less than 4% of those applicants being accepted, it is one of the dream schools that students set their sights on. Today, what I thought I'd do is share my admissions file that got me into Columbia University and actually managed to win me the Founders Scholarship there as well. Today what we're going to be covering is my resume, my personal statement, and also the supplemental scholarship questions that I wrote down. And in doing so, I really hope that this helps you on your journey. This is the final video in a four-part series talking about all the successful admissions I had to Harvard, Stanford, Penn, and now we've got Columbia. So I've really been enjoying these and I hope these are really beneficial to you guys as it seems to have been so far. Okay, so let's just get cracking into my admissions file. It's roughly 30 odd pages, but the most of it is just my own personal information, which is pointless to share. But this is what the front cover looks like. And um, let's just get cracking. So the first few pages are obviously just personal information that have nothing to do with anything. Okay, so let's just jump straight into my resume that got me into Columbia and all these other universities. As context, I'm 23 years old and it's not the most impressive of resumes, but I think for my age, I've been able to do a lot in the field of education and as a result, I found a lot of success. So let's just start with education. So I studied at my local state university in Western Australia. Um, I received first class honors. I had a GPA of 6.7 for two out of seven and a WAM of roughly 84%. Um, and I was also on an engineering scholarship. So to be honest, the grades were probably one of the weakest parts of my application. Um, first class honors just basically means you averaged above 80%, but I didn't top any units. I wasn't valedictorian. I wasn't even close to any of that. So kind of just a slightly above average middle of the road student. Um, but I think the rest of my application is what really matters. And as with most people, grades aren't the be all and end all. What they're really interested in, particularly in the US, is what have you actually achieved? So let's dive into that. Um, so the first part of my resume is just sectioned around my professional experience in education. So the first two experiences are centered around my background, spending the last five years building education non for profits. So Basically what I did is I started writing all the high school textbooks for year 12 students and selling them on a two for one donation model where for every two we sell, we produce and donate a third to the library of a school in a low socioeconomic area. So that was Thrivet. I built that for around two years, published a bunch of books. Um, and then I merged that with another organization to form Elucidate Education, which has all the textbooks, but then also an online platform that's helped around 82,000 students each year. So that's First part of my resume, I also did some research experience at my local graduate school of education doing um, research into mental health. I also produced my own documentary on social emotional learning and helping young people to reach their dreams. And then finally, at the bottom, I just managed uh, a uni club here that helps um, more than a thousand low SES students every single year develop their soft skills such as leadership, teamwork, and just make friends in general. So those are some of the experiences that I had throughout my undergraduate degree. Um, and they made up the, the crux of my professional experiences in education. I also had some book publications in education. So I published six books. Um, I had a bunch of honors and awards, particularly for volunteering. They weren't very academically heavy. Um, and I had some background in doing uh, sport for Ninja Warrior, not only competing um, at the world championships, but also creating a 24 hour pull up challenge and doing a lot of sports commentating for the Australian and world ninja leagues. So that was cool to add on there. Um, obviously not very education focused, but just showing them that perhaps I've got more than meets the eye. Um, and then the back page is just more community impact. I'm not the most proud of this back end, but um, I was cast for like a television show, had got to give a TEDx talk and uh, engaged in a few different scholars programs and awards judging. So little things here and there. Um, and I would have re I've gone since over time, I've restructured my resume um, just to have it mostly centered around community impact because things such as my hobbies um, and my ambassadorship experience, to be honest, isn't probably that useful for an education program. So that's how I've gone about changing that. But at the end of the day, it's a resume. Um, it's not going to make or break your admissions. What's really important and what they're really focused on is your statement of purpose. So I'm going to run through that now. Um, 
Hopefully this gives you some insights. You only get a thousand words with Columbia. So I would say it's the right amount to, to have for a personal statement. So I'm just gonna read it out step by step. I basically structured it as starting with my personal background, then going into my professional achievements and future ambitions, and then finally how the program's gonna help me. I think it's a very stock standard structure that can be very helpful in reaching your ambitions. So let's just get started with paragraph one where I talk about my experiences going through Australian high school. It's nothing personal, but my Australian high school was not for me. I sat subserviently still for five days a week and found it impossible to pay attention to my teacher's monotone recitals for more than 10 minutes at a time. As a result, I taught myself at night through the online learning platform Khan Academy. Listening to the engaging voice of Sao Khan in his free education videos empowered me to thrive in school and inspired the work I do today, supporting tens of thousands of young Australians. So just talking about how I used Khan Academy going through school and how that inspired my non-for-profit work, writing textbooks that are student friendly. The next paragraph, again, it starts with this idea of it's nothing. Uh, I use it's nothing multiple times throughout my personal statement as like a hook to each new paragraph. It's nothing Australia seems to be ashamed of, but socioeconomic status is one of our strongest determinants of educational attainment. In my first year of university, I mentored a class of year 10 students in a low socioeconomic school, just 20 kilometers outside of Perth. And I asked them who here believes they can go to university out of 30 students, only two put their hands up uh, in Australia. And in many developed education systems, socioeconomic status is one of the strongest determinants of educational attainment. And it's a real tragedy and it's something that I've been trying to address through the work that I do currently and the future work that I want to do. So really touching on that sobering experience that I had in my first year of university. The next paragraph, I'm not really going to go into too much. It just starts with, it's nothing Australian schools seem to care about, but high school failed my mental health. Because um, my ambitions are centered around social emotional learning. Uh, it's something that I had to talk about, which is my own experience going through school and how I struggled uh, and, and why school caused me to struggle. But essentially, I tied it to this idea that it's due to the absence of social emotional lessons during school, which is we're so academically focused that they, there is missing that social emotional element of schooling that I would like to see change. So that's a little bit about my personal background. Again, there's no flexing there. There's very little to do with anything that I've achieved. Um, but I'm telling a story, I'm bringing the reader in, and I think it's a, a good way to approach it. The next paragraph is where I start to add in my accomplishments, um, which is really important. They need to see your professional background. And usually I found that this is the best structure to do it. I think this really appealed to the schools, which is start very personal and then go professional afterwards, like hook them in and then really back it up with who you are as a person, really start putting out there all of your achievements. So let's now dive into this next paragraph. It's nothing our education policymakers seem to be doing anything about, but millions of Australian students are just like me and the low socioeconomic students I mentored. As a six-time co-author and the co-founder of one of Australia's largest ed tech non-for-profits, Elucidate Education, I have worked tirelessly to provide more than 100,000 high school students by giving them equitable access to the textbooks, online content, and educational videos they need to succeed in school. Additionally, as a life skills educator, I have published my own nonfiction book called Realizing Dreams, made countless life education films, and taught thousands of students essential social emotional skills through giving school speeches. However, these efforts only scrape the surface of my ambitions for giving millions of young Australians access to more equitable and holistic education opportunities. So in this professional experience paragraph, I was very streamlined in what I was talking about. I just named a couple of my accomplishments that are really important to the ambitions that I'm now going to get into. My ambitions are to develop two nationwide ed tech initiatives that will significantly advance Australia's education equity and holistic education efforts. My first ed tech initiative aims to expand Elucidate Education Australia wide to provide our 750,000 year 10, 11 and 12 students with free access to all the textbooks, online content, educational videos and assessment software they need to succeed in school. My second EdTech initiative aims to build a nationwide life education curriculum that will be freely available on the Elucidate Education platform. To do this, I plan to collaborate with leading experts in social emotional learning to create engaging videos and online content that will equip millions of young Australians with the knowledge they need to thrive beyond school. Okay, 
huge ambitions there. I love the dot point format. I think it's so underrated and I would highly recommend that when you're writing your application, which is just have a go at using bullet points, have one or two bullet points of what are your exact ambitions, make them very tangible, very clear. And that's what I was able to provide in all of my applications that I submitted. Now the most important part, which is how's the degree going to help me to get there? And that's what I answer next. The MA in Instructional Technology and Media at Columbia University Teachers College is undoubtedly the best program in the world to empower me to achieve these ambitions. For expanding Elucidate Education Australia-wide, I want to ensure I am designing ethical education technologies that provide targeted support to marginalised Australians from low socioeconomic, rural and Indigenous backgrounds. As a result, I am excited to learn from instructional design expert Professor Jin Kuwata in his units, Instructional Design of Education Technology and Theory of Programming of Interactive Media. With his strong background doing award-winning instructional design consulting for the United Nations, I will gain a comprehensive understanding of instructional design, the learning barriers created by EdTech, and how to use UX theory and other design theories to build well-designed products. By working at the Columbia Education Startup Lab, I can then use this knowledge to redesign my textbooks, videos, and content at Elucidate Education to be more ethical, inclusive, and enriching for hundreds of thousands of marginalized Australian students. So that's how the program's gonna help me to achieve ambition number one. Now let's see how it help me to achieve my second ambition. For my life education curriculum, I am eager to learn from Professor Iona Literate and Professor Mario Creech in their units, Technology and Culture and Culture, Media and Education. These units will allow me to uncover the cultural implications of media, the role of media in young people's lives, and the relationship between technology, culture, and society. Pairing this with a field experience unit at an educational media company in New York, such as Sesame Workshop, will be the perfect blend of experiences I need to grow my filmmaking skills, learn from the world-leading producers of Sesame Street, and prototype a life education curriculum that engages marginalized Australian students. Okay, so again, really succinct, really clear about what I'm hoping to gain from my program specific specifically. I did so much research into each program that I applied for, and that's where the strength of the application comes in, which is it shows that I really care about the programs that I'm applying for and that I have a genuine interest in them and a deep understanding of their structure and how I'm gonna use it to the fullest. Okay, now we're gonna talk about Beyond the Classroom. What do I hope to gain there? Beyond the Classroom, the opportunity to actively engage in the multimedia production team at the Teachers College Mask Lab will allow me to learn design processes for creating films that are grounded in design principles and leave a lasting impact on an audience. Working from the Columbia Startup Lab also brings the exciting opportunity to build partnerships with fellow EdTech non-for-profit founders. For instance, since our Elucidate Education platform supports more than 59,000 international students each year, I hope to form partnerships with teachers college students that will allow us to share our EdTech and expand our impact to hundreds of thousands of additional students. Okay, so three hard hitting paragraphs. I really hope that gives you guys um, some structure around how you could do the same for your Columbia Answers or perhaps um, any other college that you're applying for. Um, the final thing that Columbia asks for is how do you plan to contribute to the community? So I'm just going to go through that. Above all else, as someone who aligns with the Teachers College mission and its diverse community, I believe it is a place where I can contribute immensely. To enrich the Teachers College with innovative ideas of how they can address inequalities in their home education systems, I plan to continuously contribute my perspectives about how Australia's education system marginalizes specific communities and how I have developed EdTech initiatives innovations over the last five years to disrupt these inequalities. Additionally, as an international student who has traveled the world for the sport of Ninja Warrior, I empathize with the challenges of living away from home. To foster a strong community amongst in international students, I plan to host cultural dinner nights that celebrate our diverse backgrounds and also join positions of student leadership to increase international representation. My core focus will be to expand the opportunities for students to form entrepreneurial collaborations and research partnerships that will improve education opportunities for millions of marginalized millions of marginalized students across the globe. Okay, so that's kind of how I plan to make a distinct contribution to the Teachers College in Colombia. Again, very tangible initiatives um, that link back to my own background 
Uh, and hopefully that gives you some ideas if you have to do a contribution to community answer, which is very common among so many colleges. Like for me, Harvard, Stanford and Columbia all asked for it. Um, all the UK colleges will also ask for it. So definitely get used to figuring out how you could contribute to a community. And now we've just got a very short conclusion. It is the unique combination of world leading professors, the diverse student cohort and unparalleled on campus opportunities that make Teachers College the best place in the world to empower me to achieve my EdTech ambitions and make a transformational difference in the lives of millions of young Australians. So that's my personal statement. Um, I really hope that gives you guys some insights. Obviously, you're going to have to go away and write your own, but hopefully you got some ideas around how you could structure it, um, perhaps some ideas of how you could go about talking about the benefits of your degree, you know, taking what I've done and, and maybe using that as a bit of a template for, for your ideas. I would just say have a very clear vision about what you want to do and then figure out exactly how the degree is going to help you get there. It'll take many iterations and many drafts, but it's definitely worth it. Okay, now the final thing, which is the additional supplemental for the scholarships um, at Columbia. Basically, at Columbia and at many of these universities, you just write some additional answers if you want to be considered and you believe that you would be a strong candidate. Um, and in the case of Columbia, there was only one question. You had about 250 words. Um, the prompt was, Teachers College seeks to recognize a broad range of talents and extend educational access through its funding sources in order to support learning and success of a diverse, high achieving student body. Basically with that prompt, what they wanted to see is you've got 250 words to talk about how you fall within that statement. How do you align with that statement? How do you align with the Teachers College mission? Um, and this was kind of my 250 word response. As a young, ambitious Australian who has developed innovative solutions to provide more than 100,000 students with equitable access to the resources they need to succeed in school, I believe I epitomize this teacher's college goal. When I was 18 years old, I joined the Rotary of Crawley on a David Goldstone scholarship. With little money to live on, the scholarship allowed me to volunteer my time supporting Australia's most marginalized communities by running food drives, gala nights, and essential needs collection events. The deep fulfillment I gained from helping thousands of vulnerable Australians instilled the value of service above self within me, and I have since focused my efforts towards supporting marginalized Australian students with their education. At 23 years old, I have co-authored six non-for-profit books, co-founded two education non-for-profits, served on non-for-profit boards, conducted graduate school research into student mental health, and raised more than $45,000 for West Australian charity, charities focused on supporting youth. Through my efforts, I've been recognized as the winner of six of the most prestigious volunteering and teaching awards in Western Australia. Beyond my deep commitment to education, I've competed in Ninja Warrior on the world stage, received first class honors for my engineering studies, and have been cast for a charity television show that is broadcast to more than 100 million people. Through the financial support of the Teachers College, I will take full advantage of my year in New York contribute immensely to the diverse teachers college community and return to Australia to continue expanding education opportunities for millions of marginalized Australian students. Basically what I was trying to show there is that I'm someone who's really maximized my time on this earth, maximized my time with the opportunities that I have and through receiving financial support from the teachers college, I will continue to do so into the future. Um, there's definitely a million different ways in which you could approach this prompt. This is just the one that I did. I really just said, you know what, I'm just going to tell them everything that I've done that aligns with the Teachers College mission, um, that shows them that I am a high achieving student, that I've done a lot, and that I'm going to continue to do a lot. And um, it turned out to be successful for me. I'm sure it's not just this 250 words that they're judging you on, but rather the overall quality of your application when they're assessing them. So yeah, that's gonna be the final video in this four part series. If you haven't seen the ones to Harvard, Stanford, Penn, um, and now you've got Columbia, be sure to go check those ones out. Um, if you have aspirations to get into those schools, I'm sure they'll be extremely helpful in helping you to navigate the application questions. Um, I've got a lot of really cool videos coming in the future and I really hope you guys enjoy them. Thank you so much for all the support as of recent. It's been a really cool um, upswing to see the amount of interest that have been coming from these videos and I'll see you guys in the next one. Good luck.